video about the Crux Comet and try to inform myself and y'all on uh, what's going on with the Crux family of comets, which are the Sun Grazer comets. Um, I got information uh, yesterday that I want to update everyone about, and we're going to do some more of that, and you're going to watch it, and I'm going to record this video. Here we go. Good morning everyone, it's Francis at 7.43 a.m. on Thursday, December 29th. And we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, the Crutz family of Sun Grazer Comets and try to inform ourselves a little bit more about them. Um, what I'm looking for specifically, and we're not going to get to that point uh, in this video, but we will get there eventually, is I want to know where to look for, the, uh, for future Crutz Comets. And where they come from and where to expect them to come from. Uh, I'm showing you Com the Cosmic Obsession website this morning because we did an update. We try to do a blog update every morning uh, and this morning December 29th is watch what it takes to set up our Cosmic Obsession mobile broadcast and below the little po post are the two embedded videos I'm making note of this because this is the first time I think I embedded them straight from YouTube, so I like this better, uh, and I'm going to probably be embedding the videos in the future because before I was just linking to them, and uh, maybe you can tell me what you think. Uh, the two videos, view one and view two, show uh, because I have now I now have two cameras. You're going to get two views uh, when, whenever I'm uh, prompted or motivated to. to two view shots. We have two separate views of the same event, the setting up on December 27th for the live uh, Night Skies Network um, broadcast. And it gives the viewers a chance to see what it takes to set the telescope up. And the reason why we made the permanent observatory is to eliminate the need for setup uh, on a consistent and regular basis. So. Please visit CosmicObsession.com every morning if you're interested in what we did the day before or going to do in the future. Um, have some good information. Now let's move on to the Kretz Sun Grazers. The Kretz Sun Grazers are a family of sun grazing comets characterized by orbits taking them extremely close to the sun at perihelion. They are believed to be a fragment of one large comet that broke up several centuries ago and are named for German astronomer Heinrich Kutz, who first demonstrated that they were related. So Heinrich demonstrated or proved that these Sungrazer comets are related, which means they're all from one. Many hundreds of smaller members of the family, some only a few meters across, have been discovered since the launch of SOHO satellites in 1995. Now, none of these smaller comets has survived its perihelion passage. Larger sun grazers, such as the Great Comet of 1843 and C 2011 W3 Lovejoy, have survived their perihelion passage. Amateur astronomers have been successful at discovering Kretz comets in the data available in real time via the internet. So what that means is like the man who discovered uh, Lovejoy. Uh, 2011 W3 Lovejoy, Terry Lovejoy, uh, found some of his comets, not this one, but he has found some in the past using SOHO. So you can, if you can do the astrometry and make the calculations and make the submission of the observation first, you can get your name on one of these uh, comets, Crutz comets, Sungrazer comets, and uh, that that's, that's possible. That's why I always say that astronomy is now a science that, that any amateur can get involved in at any level and become important and 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 make important discoveries and, and and be a part of the discovery. Uh the first comet whose orbit has been found to take extremely close to the sun was the great comet of sixteen eighty. This comet was found to have passed just
just 200,000 kilometers above the sun's surface, equivalent to about the half the distance between Earth and the moon. It thus became the first known sun grazing comet. Its perihelion distance was just 1.3 solar radii. Now, of course, you can go to Wiki and, and read this, and I'm reading it out loud because I'm informing myself. Um, this next time I'm just going to quickly reading so I can become more informed. I, I uh, recommend that anyone who's interested in these comets in astronomy take a look because this, this would be a, a focal point of my research, uh, trying to point the telescopes or the telescopes I have available um, in the direction of where these are coming from. Now, SOHO satellites offer us a view, a field of view, uh, of one area of space, a consistent area that orbits around the sun. But um, other telescopes, privately owned telescopes, observatories, can point out maybe farther than we can see on SOHO. Now, I'm going to get a little bit farther into this because I'm not sure exactly how I, in the Northern Hemisphere, with our telescopes of cosmic obsession, can 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 be of value in this case, and I'll show you why. So, I'm going to continue on to the next part. And what this information is telling us is that there's a family of comets, the sun grazer comets, that come up to the sun. We are familiar with them when we see them on SOHO burning up before they get to the sun. What makes them uh, more interesting to me is that Lovejoy made it by, which made it of a larger size, uh, unlike the others that we're used to seeing and so it's telling me that there's bigger ones out there and reading information and talking to uh, my sources and the people I interact with they're saying well if there's a big one maybe there's an even bigger one and that correlates to the sunspot activity on the sun which we're going to research and go and confirm the numbers and look and, and try to track that data in the future um, as the passage of love joy went by the sun um, what happened to the sunspot, the count of sunspots, and what can we expect in the future. And then uh, look back for more coming, unnamed ones, bigger, smaller, whatever we can find. Now we're going to go back here and go to JPL, and on here is the uh, orbital diagram for C2011 W3 Lovejoy. There are two colors, you'll see this line here, and this de denotes the, the path of Lovejoy. And in these orbital paths like this, there are two colors. There's a darker blue color, this color, and a lighter blue color, which you'll see. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in and see the lighter blue color. If you get in close, you'll see there's a lighter blue color somewhere right in here for Lovejoy. What these colors denote is whether the object is above or below the ecliptic plane. And in this case, as I'm learning, I'm saying to myself, Comet Lovejoy came from below, you see it came from below back here, from below and underneath us, came up to the sun, just got over, over the top of what would be our equator, and then went right back down again. So down from below, below up toward the sun, over the ecliptic, and then down back, down back below and away. And you'll see here the, the, the passage. So let me see if I zoom out. What other, I don't think we have any any other planets in, in, its, in its passage. And you'll see here that, you know, if I make a note of it, CW, it, this comet is not, I mean, is not near Mercury, or nor is it Venus, but if you zoom out, you'll know that the SOHO satellites are um, before and behind. So see this, if there's a SOHO over here and it's seeing this view, it looks like the uh, comet is in line with Mercury, or and over here you'll see Mercury. I don't know exactly. People like T. Bar, 1984, know more about that. But I'm just talking, you know, making light of that. Um, people directed me to a video on YouTube with the comet and Mercury together. I don't doubt that because we have a, a head and behind uh, satellites, so they get different views of the sun and the interaction of these objects. So they're not really interacting; they're very far away. But back to uh, the below. So, if this is a family of comets and his brothers and sisters are taking similar orbits, I need to go back and find out what this is, where this is, where it came from, and try to train some telescopes in the general direction of where these things are coming from 
and taking pictures and seeing if we can keep our eye out in that part of space. Important to note that we are above the equator. We are the northern hemisphere. I do not believe at this point, looking at this orbit, that my telescopes can obtain that field of view from below. I'm going to have to now go to Australia or maybe probably rely on Australia, just like we saw. Uh, the reason why we're seeing Comet Lovejoy in Australia is because it's so far below us, is I need to activate the Australian telescopes and start pointing back where Comet uh, Lovejoy came because uh, it, it was brought to my attention as uh, this is a comet that broke up into a bunch of pieces uh, and a breakup of an object like that you have from tiny tiny particles to bigger chunks and then maybe you have larger chunks so we need to mm, make mention keep an eye out uh, for these objects because this this comet made it by the sun it was big look how uh, uh, astronomically beautiful it was to the viewers in Australia uh, it must be something big because that was quite a comet. I've already told you how jealous I am from not being able to see it in person, but that doesn't mean there might not be a larger chunk because again, what, what am I talking about? When something has an impact and breaks up, uh, you have from small pieces to big pieces, but I believe the bigger pieces would be closer together, so this might be uh, a, a, a type of signal to uh, to an astronomer like myself. It's like, hey, it, bigger one came along, and I'll, let's keep our eye out to see what's if there's anything coming next, because remember, this comet was just discovered on December 2nd, so it, all these are not marked or named and, or known, and it, we only had 20-30 days leeway notice from the time the Crutch Comet was noticed to the time it actually passed the sun. Some of my friends have talked about uh, the sunspot decrease as the comet went by, and what if there was a, a, a larger bigger comet that passed the sun, would that decrease uh, the sun's activity even more um, going forward, it, it, would, it, would, would it change the way we see the sun as the comet passed by, so this is relevant and important, it's not uh, intended to alert anyone other to the fact other than uh, pay, let's go back there and look, the astronomers, that's what the astronomers do, so Francis, let's see if we can get back there and take uh, regular images of a certain area that I'll determine uh, and see if there's anything we can do with learning more about Crutz, Sun Grazing Comets, the family, and uh, what that means to us. Again, we're here on the uh, Horizon site, and this is the, uh, the current ephemerids for Lovejoy. And I'll just scan down. Those would be the locations where you can find uh, Comet Lovejoy on the dates intended. Right ascension, declination. So they track that movement consistently. This would be the information that you can uh, insert into your software as well and be tracking it with your software. Okay, I guess that's kind of it. We talked about the Crux family of sun grazer comets. The interest to me is, is there more following Comet Lovejoy? And if there is, is it bigger? And if it's there, when will we discover it? And who will discover it? And where do we look to discover it? As well, we have uh, some information from Terrell, um, partial coordinates for the heavy mass object, according to some of his uh, sources in his chat room. I am in contact with the astronomers in his group, and we're going to follow along on that experience as well. But this is the Crux family of comets, Sun Grazer comets, uh, associated to 2011 W3, Comet Lovejoy, that just made it past its perihelion with the sun and is racing away and below Earth. So, we'll talk to you soon. This is Francis. We hope you have a great Thursday. Uh, enjoy yourself. Be happy. Be busy. Get some work done. And we'll talk to you soon.